Uh, my question is, how do Christians get through the state-funded educational system to get their degree and then later a job without becoming discredited by the professors for their faith? Oh, mm. Why do you care? Mm. Seriously, I mean, that's a serious question. That's not a rhetorical question. Why do you care? Who are these guys? Anybody have a professor that you really respected? Okay, how many of them? Hand, handful. One, one, one or two. Okay, they're going to discredit you. They're going to. I, I used to think. Um, I, I've learned a lot in the last ten years since September 11th. Um, um, the September 11th, I was a different guy, and I didn't know an awful lot, and I didn't pay attention, and I was, um, I was just a different guy. And then I got my first death threat because I didn't know what was happening in the Middle East. And I decided to look into it. And I went to Israel. And I came back and I said, you know what? I think Israel is right. And I've, I've really looked into both sides. And I looked at the, and then I got my first death threat. And then I thought, ooh, wow. And I had a choice. Shut up or continue to speak. And oh, well, let the, let the dice fall where they may. Then we had people starting to tell us that the government blew up the World Trade Centers. I got my next death threat. Shut up or keep talking. I decided to keep talking. Then I went to Fox, and I went to, when I went to Fox, I, I, I actually had a reputation. When I went to Fox, I was the fourth most admired man in the world, in between Nelson Mandela and the Pope. Okay? Number four, between those two giants. I looked at that list and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. What the hell's wrong with America? <laughs> <clears throat> I actually had a reputation. You'll never find me on that, that list now. You'll never find me on that list. That was before I went to Fox. Because I spoke my mind, completely discredited. Oh, well, big deal. What difference does it make? You have to look at yourself, especially if you're asking, you ask me from a Christian perspective. Let me answer, to, answer you on a Christian perspective. What did Dietrich Bonhoeffer have at the end? Nothing. What did Jesus Christ have at the end? Nothing. They took everything away. Would you, would you, if you could say at the end of your life, I lived the life of Jesus Christ. I lived the life of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I lived the life of Gandhi. I lived the life of Martin Luther King. Last week I held Martin Luther King's last writing in my hand. It's a piece of paper. It's on the stationery of the motel that he was staying at. He finished the letter, walked out on the balcony, and was killed. I held that letter in my hand. If you could say at the end of your days, I lived the life of Martin Luther King, would that be a good thing? Martin Luther King was dragged through the mud. And you know what? You could end up being somebody like um, McCarthy. McCarthy it, is not a bad guy. He was a good guy. But he's not what the media and the movies have made him out to be. He was right on many things. He wasn't the guy who was doing the Committee for Un-American. That, that happened before him. He, he had some specific things he was dead right on, but they discredited him. Will somebody change that and, and correct that? Probably not. Was it worth it for him because he wasn't really a good guy? Probably not. How about Tesla? Tesla had nothing. He, in the end, he was married to a, I'm not kidding you, married to a pigeon. He said, I married this pigeon. And he talked to the pigeon, and it was, it was a husband and wife kind of thing. I don't know how that worked out for the pigeon, but he loved this pigeon. He died alone and nuts and broke. And the reason why is because he thought he could create free energy. I think he was right. I think Tesla is the most misunderstood and most maligned and forgotten person of the 20th century. Everyone should be learning about Tesla. Instead, we worship Thomas Edison, who was a bastard. He was a very bad man, a very bad man. And the world holds him up. I'd rather be Tesla. I'd rather be Tesla. Don't worry about what anybody says about you. You worry about one thing. Can you look yourself in the mirror every day? Can you look yourself in the mirror every day? 
Are you, do you know you're an honest, decent man? And what is God going to say about you? Those are the only things you have to worry about. When I went to Fox, I knew what was going to happen. I told my kids, keep a diary, please. Write down what you hear me say at home. Write down what you know about me. Write down what you hear, what you see, not what others say, but what you do. Because I know how history is going to remember me, and I don't care. What I care is, how will my grandchildren remember me? Don't you dare worry about other people. You worry about future generations. You give your children and your grandchildren something that the German people don't have. The German people don't talk about their grandparents during the war because most of their grandparents said nothing. Most of their grandparents sat down and shut up. You create a life that your children and your grandchildren can stand up when they're in a history class and some horrible tragedy has happened. Man has gone off the rails. You give your grandchildren the pride and the ability to stand up and say, my grandfather or my grandmother, she stood. She was discredited. She was called a lunatic. She may have lost her life because of it. But I know where the, I know who I came from. And I'm spending the rest of my life trying to match them. Be that person. Forget about your professors.